What's up guys, Grim here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that we did, then you are entered into the giveaway of a Primalist Wilds package, which is the $99 Wilds package on the Rift store, which is tons of stuff. But most importantly, it's got the Primalist soul in it. For those of you that are unaware, the Primalist is an absolutely powerful calling right now, and everybody is really enjoying it, especially Vulcanist. Vulcanist is just blowing people up and uh, Dervish is really good as well. So hopefully you guys are entered into this giveaway. That way you have a good chance of winning it. You guys may have noticed that I've given away three Wilds packages in a row and they are $99 on the Rift store. So it's a big giveaway and it's my appreciation to you guys for being so supportive to the channel and we may do another one if you guys continue to stick around and support the channel i, I really appreciate you guys sticking around as long as you have and there's been really busy times and really slow times so yeah i hope you guys have stuck with me and hopefully don't unsubscribe anytime that it gets a little bit slow all right so the winner of that giveaway is Boom. Congratulations. We will be sending you a message on YouTube. So check your YouTube inbox and we'll be sending your code to you just shortly. Thank you for all the support you guys have given me over the man years now. I've actually been at this for about two years or something. So yeah, it's been a long time and some of you guys have been with me since the beginning. Some of you guys were even with me before I even started the YouTube channel and was just doing a little bit of live streaming which I put a lot of effort into that. So you guys sticking around through all of that time is really important to me. And for all the subscriptions that you guys have been doing and all the donations that you guys have sent me over this amount of time, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you very much. Rated T for team. What's up guys, Graham here. Today we're gonna to go over how to create the perfect character for you in the game of Rift. Now there's several things that we're gonna go over such as classes, souls, uh, different specs, gear. So I hope you guys will be able to follow along and not get too confused because there's gonna be a lot of topics in this one video. When creating your character, you have to choose between one of the two factions, one being the Guardians, the other side being the Defiance. The Guardians are basically the chosen of the gods. They are all about divinity and trying to follow their specific deity. The Defiance, on the other hand, are the ones that have turned their backs on the gods. They are a mechanized people that deal with a lot of machinery. Which faction you choose is not too important, but it does determine the starting area that you're going to be adventuring in, as well as the zones that you're going to be leveling up through. As well as each side has three unique races that each have their individual racial abilities. These abilities can be very useful in the game, and let's take for example if we choose the Defiant side. Now, as you can see, we have three races here, the Eth, the Kalari, and the Bami. Now the Bami race actually has a mighty leap and this leap can be used as an additional charge if you're a melee type of character such as you may leap right into the middle of a bunch of monsters to get aggro or you may leap right in the middle of a bunch of players to do your AoE attacks. Either way it is going to be very useful of a skill. Now each race has their individual racial abilities that may be useful in your gameplay such as the mighty leap is for the Bami. It's all about which side you want to pick and explore the races and the abilities that they have. Once you have chosen your race, the next thing to do is to choose your calling. The callings in the game are Warrior, Cleric, Mage, Rogue, and Primalist. Now which one you choose isn't too important because each of the individual callings can do multiple roles. Take for instance a warrior could be a tank, ranged DPS, melee DPS, AoE DPS, a healer, or a support. And each of the callings can do each of these roles in their own unique way. Take for instance a rogue. It goes into a bard support spec that actually buffs up your raid with multiple stats. Whereas a mage support will go into a dominator role that will debuff the enemies and decrease their stats. So it's all about experimenting with the various specs and seeing which one you like the most. 
Now that we have our calling chosen, the next thing that we have to look at is the predetermined specs that the game provides for us. Now on the left side of the screen you see it says Righteous Defender near the top with a shield icon next to it. That shows it to be a tanking role that we can choose from. The next three down have dagger icons next to them which show that they are damage specs. Right below that is the Aromancer with a green cross next to it showing it to be a healing roll. And then right below that is the Beast Lord with a flag next to it showing it to be a support roll. Now which one you choose is completely up to you and your playstyle. But if you look on the right side of the screen it says Guide Provided by Rough Raptors. That is a player in the game and he provided this specific spec. So Rift has it to where it brings in the players to get involved. And as you play the game with this specific role, it will give you the option to auto fill your soul trees and spec your character out exactly how Rough Raptors want you to do it. And it will also have an external guide on a web page that you can read to see exactly how to play this role and to do it in its maximum efficiency. The next thing we're going to do is customize the look of our character. You can go with one of the presets at the bottom right side of the screen and go with a predetermined look if you would like, or you can customize your character. There are almost an endless supply of options with this in that you can change the height, hairstyles, hair colors, markings on face, almost anything. So be as creative as you like with it. Once you get comfortable moving around and exploring in the game, the next thing you need to do is determine what kind of role that you're going to play in the groups that you're going to be taking part in. Now there are several different roles that comprise a good group. The first being a tank. That is the absorption damage taking role. This is primarily a heavily armored character with a lot of absorption abilities with dodge, guard, and block in their primary stats on their gear. Now they are going to get the aggro from all of the monsters around in the area and hold that aggro so that all the damage dealing rolls will be able to cast freely or use their damaging abilities without worry of having the monsters turning on them because generally they cannot take a hit like you will be able to take a hit as you are spec for that particular role and the healers will be able to freely heal you and not have the monsters turn on them as well. Then we have the damaging specs which are known as the DPS or damage per second. Now these particular specs are made to do as much damage at a high rate. So you have to be able to protect them with the tank and keep them healed with the healers so that they can do the maximum potential that they can and bring down the monsters or players that they are hitting. The third role we're going to talk about is the healing specs. Now this is a very, very important part of a group in that everybody is going to take damage. The tank is going to take a majority of the damage and have really high health in order to absorb that damage, but the healer has to heal the tank in order to keep him alive over the duration of the fight. And also all of the DPS is going to take damage as well generally because a lot of monsters use an AoE attack, which is an area of effect and it's going to damage everybody in the group a lot of the time so a healer is essential to a good group to keep them all healed and be able to cast freely without harm from the monsters the last major role we're going to talk about is the support role. Now this can be pretty unique between the different callings because each of them have their own way of playing support. Take for example one support role may buff up the whole party or raid whereas another support may debuff the targets. Now there are other ways of playing support such as with crowd control such as turning the monsters or players into squirrels or even chain stunning them or debilitating them. Whichever way you want to play a support role is up to you but each of the different callings has their own way of doing it. Once you've determined which role you would like to play, the next thing to do is to gear your character out for that particular role. Now there are several attributes that you want to look for on your gear that's going to help you play that role, such as if you're wanting to play a tank class, 
you want to go with high endurance as well as attributes such as guard, block, and dodge. If you're playing a DPS role, you want to go for high attack power or spell power as well as high physical crit or spell crit and crit power. If you're playing a healing role, you want to go for high attack power or spell power. And if you're playing a support, it could be any of the attributes depending on which support that you're playing. Keep in mind that each calling has their own attributes that they benefit from. Such as a warrior, its main attribute that you want to look for on your gear is strength. A really high strength attribute is going to benefit a warrior substantially. The secondary attribute that benefits warriors is dexterity. It's not as much of a benefit, but it is a benefit. Now as far as intelligence and wisdom, warriors have absolutely no benefit from those two stats, so you do not want that on your gear whenever you're playing a warrior. Now endurance helps out every single spec, so always go for that, but you only want it really high whenever you're playing a tanking spec. The stats that the other callings benefit from is a rogue will benefit mainly from dexterity and its secondary stat is strength. A cleric will mainly benefit from wisdom and the secondary stat is intelligence, whereas a mage will benefit mainly from intelligence and secondary stat being wisdom. As for the primalists, they benefit equally from both strength and dexterity. Other things you'll find on your gear is things such as critical chance. Now if you're a warrior, rogue, or a primalist, you will benefit from physical crit chance and if you're a cleric or a mage, you will benefit from spell critical chance. Now what this is, is the higher you have in this particular attribute, the more chance it is that you'll land a critical strike on your target, whether it's a damaging ability or a healing ability. Now, of course, a critical strike is an increase in output on that particular hit, such as if you normally are going to hit the target for 10,000 damage, it may increase up to 20,000 damage with that critical strike. Next, we have crit power. Now, what this is, is the higher you have in this particular attribute, the harder the critical hits are going to be. Take, for instance, if your critical hit is going to hit for 20,000 damage, if you have a really high crit power, it may hit for 25,000 damage instead and really increase your DPS or healing done. Then we have attack power and spell power. Now attack power is unique to warriors, rogues, and primalists, and spell power is unique to clerics and mages. Now what this does is it's a flat rate increase to your overall damage or healing output. It is not a chance such as physical and spell crit is. It is actually an always applied attribute and it will benefit you greatly on your character. Lastly, we'll go over the tanking attributes such as block. The higher that you have in block, the more chance it is that you will block an attack and reduce the overall damage done to you. And then we have dodge, which if you have a really high dodge, it increases your chances of dodging out of the way of the attack altogether and receiving no damage at all. And then we have the guard stat. Now this is something that will reduce the damage received by all party or raid members that are within a certain radius of the tank that has the guard attribute. So it is a super important stat and one that every tank should be looking to get really high. There are a couple of other things that you can do to increase your overall stats. One being get a planner focus. What this is, it's an item that you can equip to your character and apply essences to it in the empty slots. Each one of these essences has a lot of stats to it, so it will benefit your character greatly. As you get more powerful, you will get more powerful planar foci and you will be able to have even more essence slots and get even more powerful essences to apply to it and it will give your character a lot of stats, so it is a very important item to have in the game. The next thing is Planar Attunement. Now this is basically an alternate advancement that is unlocked at level 50. So whenever you go out and fight monsters or players after level 50, you not only gain experience that goes towards leveling, but you also get planar experience that once you get enough of it, it will give you a point in Planar Attunement that you can spend on any of these trees. Most of them are based on the elements such as earth, air, fire, and water, but then it goes into stuff such as death, life, war, and other things. And if you look on these trees, you will see things that will increase your endurance, it will increase your other stats, 
It will increase your resistances as well as give you different abilities such as abilities to summon rifts or summon your party to a particular rift. So a lot of things in these planar attunements are very important to your character and will make you a lot more powerful. Now we're at the part of the video that is definitely the most important but also the most complicated in that it is the Soul Tree tutorial. This is where you'll learn how to spec out your character in a particular way to be strong in your role and not a jack of all traits that's not really that beneficial to your group. Now if you look on the left side of the screen you'll see lots of preset roles much like you had whenever you first created your character but there are a lot more that's provided this time. Now all of these were created by players and provided to try on for you guys so it's also getting the players involved once again. Now you can choose any of these and they will help you out a lot in that if you do not know how to spec out your character these will do it for you and also provide guides for you to look at such as if you look at the bottom right side of the screen you will see guide select and close. You can click on guide and it will open up a web page for you to look at that particular role and learn how to play it. For this tutorial we're not going to go with any of the presets because I'm going to show you how to spec out your character yourself and not have to rely on any of the presets that way you can be as creative as you want and build your character exactly how you like. So we're going to click on the close button here and it will go to the main soul tree here. Now if you look on the middle line where it says Liberator, Paladin, and Void Knight, those are the three souls that we're working with. So if we want to change that, we go ahead and click on this middle icon and we can go to any of these souls and you can mouse over the icon and read exactly what they do. Now what you want to do is you want to stack particular souls that are beneficial to one another. Take for example if we go with Paragon here. This is a damaging soul that it's all about being a DPS. It's about doing as much damage to the particular monster or player that we're targeting and not as much about protecting ourselves, put it that way. So the second soul that we want to go with will probably be another damaging soul. The only time that you really want to go away from your primary soul, as in choose something like a healing soul, second or something like that is if you're doing something else besides pure monster fighting such as if you're fighting other players you may choose a tanky soul as your second or third soul that way you can take a hit with your character rather than only being able to dish out the damage and not be able to survive if you get targeted by a player so we're going to go with the secondary soul. We're going to go with Warlord here. This is another damaging soul and very good to stack with Paragon. Now our third soul here, we're actually going to go with Champion. Champion is a melee style soul as well, but it is more of an AoE soul in that it does attacks on a whole area of effect. So it can hit multiple enemies at once. Well, with Paragon, it's more about single target damage as well as Warlord, so Champion doesn't match up with them really well, but I'll show you exactly why we went with Champion as a third soul in a second. How the soul trees work is the more points that you put on the upper part of the tree, the more it's going to unlock on the bottom part of the tree. Take for example, if we look at the Paragon Soul here, we see on the bottom part an ability called Reaping Harvest, and it has a red 2 on top of it. That means that we need to spend two points into the Paragon tree in order to unlock this ability. So we need to go on the upper part of the tree and look at our two options here. We have Combat Precision and Teaching of the Five Rings. So we're going to decide to put the two points into Teaching of the Five Rings since it increases our damage. And once we put the two points into it, you see Reaping Harvest is now unlocked. And as you go further up the tree, not only are you going to get the benefits of the things that you put points into, it's going to unlock more and more powerful abilities on the bottom part of the tree as well. Take for instance, if we fill the entire tree up with 61 points, which is the maximum we can, we go down to the 61 point ability called Alacrity down here. 
this ability is so powerful if you're in pvp it will absolutely blow people up it hits so hard and in pve it actually blows up monsters as well it does an amazing amount of damage and it's super beneficial to our character so going 61 points into paragon is actually very beneficial for us that leaves us with 15 points to work with between two different souls here so how are we going to spend our last 15 points well, the first thing that you want to do is look on the bottom part of the soul trees and see if there's any abilities within 15 points that we're really wanting to get. Now, after looking at them all, there's nothing really that we're shooting for, so that's not really that important this time. So we're going to look on the more upper part of the trees and see what's going to benefit us up there. We know that we don't want to go too deep into champion because it's mostly an area of effect damage soul and we're looking at single target damage since that is what Paragon is really good at. And we know Warlord is going to complement that. So let's look into our Warlord tree and look at our two options here. We have Soldier's Might which every point put into it will increase our strength by 2%. And then we have Shatter which it's going to make our Breaking Blow increase the damage that the enemy takes. Well, Breaking Blow is a finisher, and we know that we're going to be using the finisher from the Paragon Tree, not the one from Warlord, because we have so many things in the Paragon Tree that we actually have that benefits Reaping Harvest. So we do not want to use another finisher over Reaping Harvest. So there's no point in putting points into Shatter here. So we're going to put all of our points into Soldier's Might here, well, the five points that it allows us to. And it's going to increase our strength, which is going to be very beneficial to a warrior. Alright, that unlocks the second tier of things here. And we want to look at these and see what we will benefit from the most. Okay, here we have Neck Punch, which is an interrupt. Do we want to take that? Because that is very beneficial in PvP. It's very beneficial fighting monsters. But we've already got to interrupt on the other side over here on Paragon with Flinching Strike. And they both share the same cooldown. So if we use Flinching Strike, we can't use Neck Punch right afterwards because it will be on cooldown. So we don't really need to interrupt. So we don't want to put points into that. And we got Strength of Arms, which is going to increase our attack power and weapon damage. Uh, we got Tactical Advantage, which is going to increase our damage of attacks that generate attack points. And we got Backhand, which is a no global cooldown ability that's going to do some damage if it is used after a block or a dodge. Well, we're probably not going to be using a shield, but if we go into this next tier and get Combat Veteran, we can block without a shield, so that will make Backhand actually a little bit beneficial. But we're just going for overall abilities here that increase our damage because we're going for an all DPS build. We're not about taking damage. We're going to be dishing out the damage and we're going to let a tank take that damage. So we're going to go ahead and go into strength of arms here and we're going to put five points into that. That's going to unlock the next tier which we have to decide. Do we want to put points into tactical advantage or do we want to put points into somewhere else here? Oh, over here on the champion side, we actually have it to where we can put points into Titan Strength and get 2% extra strength for every point. Or we can put points into Take No Prisoners and get damaging abilities that consume attack points, deal an additional 2% damage. Well, those seem pretty nice, but I actually am thinking that we're going to get this Battlefield Medic now. That sounds like a pretty good heal. So let's go ahead and put some more points into the warlord tree over here and let's go ahead and pick up um tactical advantage that sounds like a great ability here and that's going to unlock our battlefield medic and we've got 13 points into it do we want to spend points into champion right now well the main thing from champion that we're shooting for is called bull rush here which is going to give us an an additional charge well, you get that charge with zero points put into champion, so we don't have to put any points into champion in order to get what we're wanting after all. So there are a lot of souls that you don't have to put any points into at all, and you get the item that you want from the abilities. It's such a good thing, so always look at the zero point abilities even if you do not have the points to put into that soul. So we're going to go ahead and put two more points into uh into the breach so that we can have an additional charge 
and then we are going to put the additional point into intense training so there we have it our soul tree is absolutely full and we can go ahead and save it now if we'd like to now that we're done with our soul tree build it's time to move on to the masteries basically at level 61 you get your first tier of the mastery system which you can choose an ability from and then new abilities are unlocked with every level that you get after that so at level 61 we're really shooting to add more damage to our build here because our spec is a dps spec and we want to increase our damage as much as possible because a paragon build is going to be high in damage and that is what we're wanting to increase in order to fill our role in a group even better but on the level 61 line, we don't really have any abilities that's going to add to our damage. So we're going to go ahead and pick Enduring Survival since it adds a passive heal to us. Alright, on the level 62 line, we have a really good option here which is Physiology Proficiency which is going to increase our Reaping Harvest damages to basically three different attacks. So it will be a 30% increase rather than just one Reaping Harvest hitting for 50%. So that's a really good ability for us to choose because we're going to be using that all the time in a Paragon build. Alright, so on the level 63 line we are going to choose Gladiator Combat Training because we do a lot of attack point generating abilities and that will add a stacking buff that is going to increase our movement speed by 4% for every one of them, a max of 3 stacks so it's going to increase 12% movement speed and that's much better than say the runners training that only does a 10 percent increase so gladiator combat training it is on the level 64 abilities we're going to choose deliberate strikes here that way that we can get the building rage as well as increasing the range of our charges which we have several charges so that's a very good thing on level 65 the main thing to increase your damage is power manipulation so we're going to choose that to add to our damage this is the big one for us we want to make sure we choose this if we're going with a pve build so this is our build all together and it is looking pretty nice there are a couple of things that i'd like to go over on this build one being that it is a pretty good build whenever it comes to fighting monsters now if you decide to get involved in fighting other players, which is PvP combat, a build like this may not be optimal in that it does not use any souls that have defensive cooldowns really, such as Void Knight would have. So you may choose to change Warlord into Void Knight, and you may choose to change your level 65 mastery from power manipulation into something like power variation so you can heal yourself if you get targeted by other players. Another thing is the free souls that are offered in the game may not be exactly what you want to use on your particular build in that there are premium souls that you can get from the Rift store. Now take for example the champion soul here provides us with Bull Rush which is an additional charge for our warrior and that is a very nice ability but perhaps it's not very useful to us overall whenever it comes to being in groups. Perhaps we would like something nicer such as a ranged builder attack because our other souls do not have much for ranged attacks. One of the souls that provides a really good ranged attack is the Tempest Soul and that gives you Shock Pulse. This is a ranged builder attack that is very nice to have and put into your builder macros and it is the ability to shoot monsters from a distance or else players that are trying to run away from you you can actually finish them off with the shock pulse to the back which is very cool so if you would like to get this particular soul what you have to do is go to the rift store and go to services and as you can see a little bit down it has the storm soul pack in this particular pack it unlocks four different souls one being the Defiler, Harbinger, Tactician, and Tempest Souls. Now each of the callings gets one of those souls, such as Warrior gets the Tempest Soul, Rogue gets Tactician, Mage gets Harbinger, and Cleric gets Defiler. And there are other soul packs to choose from, such as the Dream Soul Pack, which unlocks the Arbiter, Liberator, Oracle, and Physician Souls. Now if you would like to have these souls, all you have to do is come here and buy them off of the store, and trust me, they will be very beneficial to your character, and a lot of these souls are extremely powerful. 
Well, there we have it, guys. We have our perfect build for my particular play style when doing DPS. Now, we're going to go ahead and label this build at the bottom of the soul tree and call it the DPS monster build and that is a label that I will be able to identify this particular build with whenever I click on the roles button here I will have several different roles that I could swap to and anybody can create multiple roles so that they can be a benefit to any group they end up joining take for instance if I try to get into a group and they actually need a healer instead of a DPS spec I might go up to my predetermined liberator spec which is a healing soul and go ahead and click the activate button and now i am into a healing build instead of my dps one and you can do this on the fly i've done it in what is it two seconds flat right then and i went with multiple healing souls that way i can stack healing abilities take for instance in the liberator soul here you might have several things that i'm choosing up here that will increase healing done and then there will be things in the paladin tree that will say the same and both of them will mesh really well and benefit each other so you want to usually stack souls like that that way you get the maximum output in the particular role that you're trying to fill well that's it for me guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create your perfect character in the game of rift if you have any questions or concerns feel free to leave them in the comment section below this video and make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it as usual my name is grim and i'll see you next time